On tonight's show, we have expert barber and entrepreneur, Red John. And now, for your host, Cool Card. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. This is episode 119 of the Kicking It With Cool Card show. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm here every Tuesday night. 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, tonight we got off to a little late start. Had some technical difficulties, but I think we're on track right now. We're going to try to get through it. Um, tonight I have the expert barber. He goes by the name of Rance John joining me. Um, he's he's doing his thing, man. He When you think of barber, you probably just think of cutting hair. But, I mean, this guy has pioneered this whole industry, and he's doing great and phenomenal things with it. Uh, and we're going to dive into his life and just kind of see you know what he's what he's got himself into man because he's really doing some great things for himself and others so he's not only pouring into himself he's pouring into others and he's changing lives out here all right so i'm gonna bring him in hopefully we can get him in we're having some technical difficulties earlier hence why we started a little late but um hopefully we can get him on and we can get it going all right let's get it y'all There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, Rance John, to the show. Yo, how you doing, bro? Oh, man, I'm doing wonderfully well. <laughs> okay, we, we, we made it, man. We was having some issues. Oh, here, man. man. We, we broke through. <laughs> hey, man, listen, I wasn't going to stop until it got right, so it's all good. <laughs> Hey, listen, I mean, we're about to drop some bombs tonight, then, huh? Absolutely. Yeah, we got you in the building, man. You know, I hear you doing great things. Uh, man, when I when I saw your profile, I was like, man, this dude is really doing it. Like, when you think of Barber, you don't think of all the things that you're doing. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people don't even know, like, how big the barber in, the barber in the industry is and, and just where you can take it to, like, the many different levels of things that you can do and, and go in that, in that realm. So... It kind of blew my mind, and then I saw you, and I was like, "Man, this guy has like this whole sophisticated look, like the 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 uh, the, dec the, uh, the decor in the in the um, sh in your shop, sophisticated." Then you got your your line, you know, your product. We're gonna talk about all that, but I was very impressed, brother, to say the least. I'm glad I got you on the show, so just thank you for uh, obliging and coming on, man. Ah, uh, man, I'm happy to be here, bro. Yeah, definitely. Hey, I like to start every show with a prayer. Are you okay with that? You cool? Absolutely. Let's get it. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just thank you for just allowing us to join together tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, to just give gems and value to the listeners and the watchers. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, and the viewers. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for just allowing us to get through these technical difficulties. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, patience is a virtue. We just thank you for waking us up this morning. We thank you for life, love, happiness. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, clothes on our back, shoes on our feet, and food on our table. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for prosperity and your blessings and, blessings and your riches. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we just give you all the victory, all the glory. All the love, all the praise in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Barbara, for over 20 years. So we're gonna start from the jump, man. I'm I'm not gonna ask you where you're from and all that type of little simple stuff, but I do understand that at an earlier age, you were your trajectory kind of put you down that path because it can it was basically forced out of a need. Is that correct? Absolutely, Absolutely. it was. Um well, you know, we, we were in a position where most families coming from a single family household, they can't necessarily afford a haircut. So I come from one of those households. I couldn't afford a haircut. This is when I used to have her, bro. I don't have her anymore. But when I, <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't afford a haircut. So, um, you know, going to the barber was a luxury for me. You know, and it was it was it was one of those things where, you know, I could see some of my friends coming back with the fresh cuts. Yeah, but I couldn't I couldn't get one of those fresh cuts. So, uh. 
my sister, she took it upon herself to to cut my hair. She started off as my first barber. So she was doing okay in the beginning, but it was that one time where she uh she had a bad day. <laughs> that bad day, that's when I just that's when I decided, hey, look, from this point on out, I'm gonna start cutting my own hair. <laughs> he, he nicked you up pretty good. <laughs> it started from that. <laughs> she, she, oh yeah, she got me. She got you. She she didn't get the ear, did she? That man, I always hate it when the barber got my ear, man. And I tell him, listen, I'm very sensitive here. It's thin skin. You can't just be back there doing whatever you want to do. And every single time, bro, they cut my ear, man. It felt like my ear was hanging off. Now, nah, she didn't get the ear. It was just a bad haircut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. That's crazy, man. So, and so you've been doing this for over 20 years. You've been in the industry for over 20 years. I believe you started your own business at 23. Yeah. Man, tell me. What was it like for you? Because I know you went to barbering school because you said you didn't want to do college or whatever. You you did. You went to barbering school. So when you went to barbering school, did they only teach you about barbering or did they teach you about the business of barbering? No, so that was separate. So for me, business was more so hands on. I didn't uh, uh, they didn't teach me the, the business side of things at all. Okay. So the business side of things came from mentors, uh, me taking a few college courses. Uh, but for the most part, it was, it was mostly hands-on. Okay. So, and so, yeah. so do you feel like, cause I know you're teaching now. I know you have your, your, um, what is it called? Your CEO grooming, finish that. Academy. CEO Groom yeah, Academy. There we go. So yeah. did you feel like there were things that you were lacking that you, that you, that you weren't taught in school that you wanted to teach these other barbers because you could see in the community that they didn't have those skills or that knowledge or that information? Well, absolutely, man. You know, uh, some of the things that I've learned, you know, I want to share to some of the more up and coming barbers that kind of help put them ahead of the game, you know, and they want to, they want, it won't necessarily take as many years to learn certain things or they won't have to bump their head as much as I did. Right. You know, um, right now, you know, you can be a barber right now and make well over six figures easily. When I first started, you know, the guys was charging 10 bucks a haircut. Right. You know, the uh, the atmosphere in the barbershop, it just was what it was. You know, um, you might go into a barbershop, it might not necessarily be clean, you know, yeah. um, all kind of profanity, all types of things going on. Now, you know, it should be a place where it's a, it's a, it's a staple in the neighborhood. But at the same time, you know, the professionalism of the barbershop had to come back, you know. Yeah. And so it was one of those things where it was like, you know, I, I figured it out. You know, uh, I, uh, and, and I implemented it, man, and it worked. Yeah. Hey, you know what? You're saying something because now I'm thinking back, like, even when I, you know, I didn't live back in those times, but like back in the 60s, 70s, when they had the barbershops, the salons, they were like pristine, you know, mm -hmm. they, they very classy, sophisticated. And then when I see yours, that's what it reminds me of. So, bam, you hit it. You mm -hmm. hit the nail on the head. I was trying to think like, dang, what does this remind me of? But there you go. You brought that back. Because if, you know, like you said, you go into our quote unquote hoods in some of the hoods and you go to the barbershops, it's not always clean. You know, it is a lot of profanity. It is a lot of shouting, yelling. I remember when I used to go, when I used to live in New York, man, I used to take an hour ride, an hour up, hour down to the Bronx to get my hair cut on a Saturday. I could go in there at 10 a.m. and I wouldn't leave until like 3 p.m. My whole day gone. That's crazy. Why? Because everybody's in there talking. Even my barber, he's taking like an hour and a half to cut my hair. It took me two hours to get in the chair because he's running his mouth. Then he's like, yo, yo, sit tight. I gotta go pick up my kid, man. I'll be back in like 30 minutes. That's another hour or two gone. Like, yeah, yeah. It, just no professionalism. So, man, yeah. thank you. Thank you. For <laughs> no, for real. Thank you for setting the example. Like people need to look at your, you know, your blueprint and say, hey, this is what it needs to be. And I'm pretty sure they could be more successful that way. Less drama oh, in yeah. that shop, more efficiency in their shop. And, and that was going to be a question for you a little later on. I was going to ask you, like, as far as when you have barbers, how do you prevent that, you know, from them being so chatty that they just can't get through one person and it takes them forever and then the lines are building up? Or I know other barbers are take the clientele, whatever. But how do you, how do you deal with that? Well, it's one of those things where it's like at this point, um, you kind of I kind of set the stage. So at, at this point in this level in my career, it's one of those things where it's like people, if, if they want to join the team, then they kind of know what to expect. 
Okay. You know, so, you know, and, and, and you know, if they come in and they join the team and, you, you know, they have some, some areas where they, they need grooming or they need some, some, some adjusting, um, it's one of those things either they will adjust or it's too much for them and they can't adjust and they leave. So, you know, so, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, you run a tight shit like the Patriots. So basically, they got to buy into the culture or they got to go. <laughs> hey, man. Well, you know what? Honestly, you know what? I, I give people opportunities. I work with people. You know, I, I'm, okay. I'm a people person. So, you know, unless it's one of those things where they just violated and they, they cross the line or something like that. But okay. for the most part, I work with people, man. You know, I'm a, I'm a people person. So it's not it's not that cut and dry unless they just really cross the line. You know, but I'm willing to work with individuals. But like I said, it's one of those things where I, I raised the bar and I set my standards so high, man. It's either you're gonna step up or for some for some individuals it's just too much for them and they step away. But I can't say anybody that comes and works alongside of me, they do learn. Okay. You know, and so the beautiful the beautiful thing of it is if you leave from my space, you're gonna leave out a better barber. That's what's up. <laughs> That's what's up. You said you said earlier that a barber these days easily could make over six figures. Now, are we speaking, are we talking about just strictly a barber and not owning the shop or a barber and having your own shop? No, a barber that's actually standing behind a chair and cutting hair. You can cut hair nowadays and make well over six figures if you if you uh if you do what you're supposed to do from a professional space. Yeah. Wow. And and listen, and have and spend time with your family and have days off and take vacation. You know, so yeah, you can you can do it. <laughs> That's impressive, man. That's yeah. impressive. But that, yeah. that just goes to show, though, when things are done right, you know, the rewards are there. You know, absolutely. You and the client tells you keep coming back. How was it? Mm -hmm. How was the transition for you when you you know coming out of school and and being a barber, and then saying, you know what, I want to run my own business. I want to help others, you know, and change their lives. What was that transition like for you? Kind of the, the hurdles, the ups and downs, or whatever. And how'd you push okay that? okay i'm gonna I'm uh keep it brief but give you a good description of it so for me when i first came out i came out on the downside of things i came out on the downside when it was a lot of chaos in the in the neighborhood barbershops when you had the hustle mans coming through the barbershop all day long uh <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was like towards the end of the of the, of the huge crack era uh, so, you know, I, uh, the, 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 the barbershops are full of, uh, drug addicts and, and, and dope dealers. Oh, All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being honest, brother. <laughs> and so that's the time period in which I came in the barbershop. All right. And so then you had a, a sprinkle of the working class in there. So it was just mixed up with a little bit of everything. So it was really chaotic, but I've always had a vision. And and, and, I, and and I've always seen things a lot bigger in, in, in the bigger picture. So what helped me was I started attending hair shows. Okay. And so I would go to hair shows in different cities um, outside of St. Louis that were doing things on a larger scale. And so I had an opportunity early to see um, guys that were in the industry that was doing things that was that were major, man. And so for me, it just gave me a different picture. And so a lot of times it's one of those things where you just have to visual, have ha, have to have the opportunity to see it in a different light. And so once I saw those things, then I was like, you know what? I want to take that back to my city and I want to do it. I want to implement some of those things because we don't have it, okay. you know, and um, I was t I was working a second job um, at the same time. So I really wasn't making what I really needed to make behind the chair. So. And uh, I just made a decision. I was like, hey, look, man, I'm gonna make this thing work. I told one of my best buddies, he, he works alongside of me. I said, hey, man, look, this is what we gonna do. So we were some, myself and it's another, two other barbers here in the city. Uh, we were some of the first barbers in the city. This was some years ago to raise our price points and to start charging appointments. And so we actually do education together. And so we, us three, we decided to do it. Um, we kind of did it at different times, but we all decided to do it. And once we did it, man, it was one of those things that just kind of broke through. We got, uh, we lost a lot of clientele, but we gained a lot of clientele to yeah. the point where it, it put me in spaces that I never could even imagine. Yeah. Um, one of my clients. I was just going to say, I'm pretty sure when you, when you raised the prices, you, you lost clientele, but you gained a different type of clientele as well. Somebody that's willing. I gained. I gained a totally different clientele. Yeah. Uh, one of my one of the clients that I 
started servicing was a gentleman uh, here in the city. He's a billionaire in the city. Um, he sought me out, you know, and it was it was just amazing, man, just to see like, you know, once you change things up and you change your mindset, like where you can actually go and not, and that's pretty much in anything, you yeah. know, and that was just an easy example for me then. I was a little nervous in the beginning, but once I dove completely in, it started to make sense. Yeah, you, I mean, yeah, that's anything, man. You gotta feel your way out and, and you just become accustomed to it, you know? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, that's great, man. Yeah, you um, as far as that, so you doing that and you saying, okay, boom, I want to educate people, I want to do my own shop, like, and okay, so just to give you a little feed, a little um, background of the show, pretty much, I, I try to bring people on here like yourself who ha who are having successes, but can also be transparent and talk about their pitfalls and the hurdles and stuff or whatever in their journey. So I just try to provide that value to somebody watching who may want to get into the barbering or is a barber trying to take it to that next level. Can you kind of give, you ain't got to be long winded on it, but just kind of give them an idea of what it was like for you when you said, okay, I'm going to start this business and I'm going to get my own shop. What was that process for you like? Like, can you give us some steps for somebody listening that may need that to take themselves to that okay. next level? Absolutely. Well, you sound like you're a man of faith. I could tell by when we started off, right? Absolutely. You opened up you opened up with prayer. So um when I actually when I first started, man, um I didn't have I didn't have anything. All I had was a, a dollar to dream. So I tell anybody, you know, um just write your vision down and make it plain, all right? Um start start from there. So however you see it begin to write it down uh, allow that to be your first blueprint and your first business plan that you can refine it as time goes on um so i started off actually i just started purchasing furniture so i didn't have a lot of money i didn't have anyone uh any financial backing uh it was a place a, a building that i used to ride by okay. okay and the building that i would ride by i would say man i would have conversations with god going to work God, that'd be a perfect place for a barbershop. And this is me in my early 20s. Okay. And um, and lo and behold, I, it was a Felice sign that came up in the building. So the the, uh, the, the, the office that was there, they moved. And um, I got it, my brother-in-law got in contact with the landlord. Um, he took me by there, we met the landlord. The landlord, God just gave me favor with the landlord. The landlord just kind of took to me. So it was one of those things where they just uh, sometimes you have to sell people with your personality as well. Absolutely. You know, so your reputation should precede you. So always, always try to keep a good standing in your community and, and just be a stand up person all the way around the board. And so anyway, God just gave me favor with the guy. Um, I was paying my started paying my rent. He allowed me to get the space. Uh, I didn't have my furniture, so I couldn't I couldn't move right in. So I was paying rent on this place for three months without any furniture in there, without anything but I would pay my rent on time. And the guy called me and he said, hey man, how come you haven't moved in yet? And I told him, I was just honest. I was like, hey, look, I don't have all the money to get my furniture to move in. And he said, what do you need? And I told the guy what I needed just to have the, the, the bare and basic essentials. And that was just um, a couple barber chairs. And be, believe it or not, when I first started off, bro, I started off uh, my waiting chairs were some, um, was from was some patio furniture was some was some plastic chairs in my waiting area. <laughs> hey, and I don't know if you, hey, hey, look, I don't know if you remember those big old TV stands and the big box TVs. That's the TV that I had in my shop, bro. At the hey, time, <laughs> hey, I've seen it. I've seen it. I, I see that to this day in waiting areas. Oh, do you? Oh, okay, all right. Hey, well, hey, that's how I started off. So. Hey, listen, he went and talked to his wife. He came back and he uh, he said, hey, look, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to cut you a check so you can go ahead and get started. And uh, the guy cut me a check and uh, they, just, they just rolled it out of my rent. And, you know, this guy gave me favor, man. But I'm, I'm saying it to say, like, you got to start somewhere. So sometimes your start should just be really just stepping out on faith yeah. to actually follow your dreams. And sometimes you just got to roll the dice and you just got to go for it. If you don't believe in yourself, then trust me, no one else will. Man, God is amazing. I I know it, brother. I know it. So wow, that's you. Just, yeah, he definitely gave you that favor, man. For somebody to do do something for you like that and just see it in you, though. He had to believe in you. He saw that passion in you and saw how hungry you were. And oh uh, yeah, it, it goes deeper than that. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> man, brother, you you speaking a word though, man. Seriously, like for people that's watching, man. If 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 it's something that you want to do. 
listen to what this man is saying. You just gotta go for it. Just do it. You might not know how, when, what, or who gonna come through, or whatever it is, but God gonna come through and it's, it's gonna get figured out. It's gonna get figured yeah. out, man. Man, yeah. you got a testimony. What's one misconception that uh that the average person might have about barbers? Is there anything out there? Oh yeah, they don't they don't make money. Mm. They they look at they, they look at our profession as though you know you can't really make money doing what we do, you know. Um, and that's the total opposite. You know, it's all, it, what it is is it's more it's for for the guy that's that's a groomer or a barber. It's all about managing the money that comes in. Yeah. But you can definitely you could definitely make a lot of money doing this. You know, yeah. where you don't have you don't have to work another job. You could provide. You could you could take care of your family. <laughs> oh man, that's dope. And I love it. I love it. Let's talk about let's talk about the technicality of barbers barber what is it barbership barbermanship barbering. So when you <laughs> so when you're taught so this is a question. Okay, you said something earlier. You said that the barbershop is the cornerstone of the community, right? Especially in the urban community. So. When you're in the urban community, and you, like you said, when you came up, it was the crackheads, it was us, and it was a lot of us, right? So you're <laughs> cutting on a lot of us, right? You're cutting a lot of hair, yeah. this type of hair. So how how what's that what's that like learning to style other ethnicities' hair or other types of hair? What is that like for you, or a barber, or or even just to be able to do that and be successful at doing all types of hair? So one of the key things is uh, educating yourself. Uh, it's just like being in anything. You have to you have to educate yourself. Okay. So if you're not familiar with cutting, so basically if you're not familiar with cutting straight hair, okay, and you're just used to cutting curly hair, um, you want to educate yourself, man. You want to pull out those mannequin heads. Uh, right now we have YouTube. Back then we didn't have YouTube for me. I'm 48, so we didn't have YouTube in the beginning, you know. But yeah. right now you have YouTube, so you can take a lot of courses on YouTube. You can follow uh, some of those instructions. Um, find you some, uh, find some of the local classes. Uh, it's a place called State Beauty. Um, for those who aren't familiar with State Beauty, if you're in that profession, you can uh, line up and link with State Beauty. State Beauty, they have a lot of courses that you can take through them also. But find other individuals that are in, in the profession, such like such as myself, such as other individuals that do a lot of one-on-one -on -one training, I offer one-on-one -on -one training, um, and, and link with those guys uh, and, and, and learn how to, you know, stretch yourself. So I would definitely say education, education, education. If you're, if you're unfamiliar and you, you know, you have a fear of cutting straight hair. Okay. And you're, yeah. and you're an award-winning barber. When I hear that, I'm like, award-winning? Well, what type of awards in barbering do you get so can you can you expound on that like how do you win awards in barbering and tell us about competitions or whatever because i know that you're a co-founder of a organization as well so can you speak on that a little bit yeah absolutely man oh uh oh you still there can yeah. you hear me yeah i hear you you're good i think we're back okay so in the industry they have these competitions and with the competitions what they do is uh they have different categories in the competition. So in the different categories in the competition, it could be uh, uh, fastest fade or um, a classic cut. And what they're doing, they give you a time limit. And with the time limit, you have to complete the, the, uh, the cut in that particular time. Okay. And once you finish it in that particular time, the judges will come by, judge the cut. And if it meets the standard of, you know, what, what, what the, what the actual cut should have been, then you you will win that particular competition. So for myself, I had won a few different competitions, and so therefore that's how I was able to win a few of those awards. Would you say that a barber's hand is kind of like a surgeon's hand? Like you gotta be, cause it, you know the slip of the hand, you you messed the whole fade up. You messed, it, you know what I mean? Oh, uh, absolutely, man. You know, so depending, on, especially depending on what cut you're doing. <laughs> man that that's that listen so what what type of practice do you feel that it takes for you to get to a level to where you can go in there be confident i'm just speaking hypothet i mean overall in general what type of training or or time does it take for one to have a steady hand like that to be confident in coming into a barbershop 
and having anybody walk through that door, whether it be long, straight hair, whether it be curly, whether it be a fade, naps, and just be confident in their hand and their precision and their steadiness <laughs> to, yeah. to, to, you know, be successful on a day-to-day, -day, day in and day out basis. I would say repetition. So, you know, with repetition, you know, it just, you, that, that helps build confidence, you know, uh, with your repetition. So you definitely want to you want to you want to definitely practice your craft and you want to have good repetition in terms of like being able to critique yourself even behind the repetition. So um, and you know what? Also work with other individuals who might be a slightly better than you. OK, you know, it's, it's nothing wrong with that, especially in the beginning. You know, you always want to work with somebody that's better than you in the craft uh, that you can actually learn from. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You always want to sharpen that steel, man. Sharpen that steel. Yeah. Like you said, learn from other people who are, who are doing their thing and and see and that's the thing man because i know and that's in any walk of life people got to get off of trying to be in competition with someone who they probably should be learning from yeah you know what i'm saying yeah, that, oh yeah so oh yeah that that could kill it that kills us <laughs> yeah and like you just stop humble yourself and learn from that person because you've if you're that type of person and you're feeling that type of way, it's probably because they are doing something better than you, something you wish you was doing. So why not just learn? Humble yourself yeah. instead of you on the sideline hating. <laughs> I don't get it. Bro, 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 I don't care, I don't care what profession you're in. It's always going to be somebody better than you. Yes. Always. <laughs> yes. Always. Always. What about um for you, your business? What's your business model? Do you rent your chairs out to contracted workers or do you have employees? I have a combination of both. Okay. So I do, uh, I do, uh, independent contractors as well as uh, I have other individuals who are on a, what's, what's called a commission Okay. as well. So I do commission as well as independent contractors. So, and what decides that do they just come in and say, Hey, I just want to work for you. And then you got some people who have just been doing their thing and they just need a chair. Well, it just it's the, it, it determines upon the uh, it, it just depends on where they are in their career. Okay. But some some guys, you know, they they're pretty established, and so they may not want to do commission. Right. You know, you have other individuals that are coming. Let's just say they haven't been out of school long. Um, they're concerned with paying uh, the rent, and so they want to make sure that they're able to pay the rent. So in the meantime, they do a commission based style where you know it's a certain percentage that goes to the owner, and they keep a certain percentage off of each client. Okay, so, so it works out. It, it, it works out for both parties. Okay, so the season, so the season contract employee—I won't say employees—they're contract independent contractors. I, I guess that's a plus for you, though, right? Because if they're seasoned, they already have a clientele base. They're gonna bring. They're gonna bring their clients. So that means that's more people coming through your door. And then, oftentimes, I don't know. You correct me if I'm wrong, because I've seen it. You might have somebody that comes in for that person, but it's so packed and they got a list. They got a long line of people behind them. So they just hop in somebody else's chair. So it's still bringing the business through the door. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. That's normally how it works. And then you just, you know, you have those clients that are just that hard. They won't go to anybody. And, th and that's yeah. understandable also. Yeah. Okay. Hey, listen, I got a, I got a demo. I got a hair demo uh, clip I put together. With some of your stuff, some of your styles. I want to play that so people can you know see how you get down and, and then we're gonna get into your product line too so i know you got the beard okay. conditioner and all that stuff so yeah let's uh yeah, let's show, show off your show off your stuff man your skill okay go ahead all right here we yeah. go
Yes, indeed, man. You over there creating magic. Surgical. Yeah, I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Thank you. Transforming Thank brothers. You. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the brothers like they came up off the streets and had them looking good. <laughs> Thank you, bro. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about the uh classic man. Classic man yeah. company and the lifestyle you got, man. I saw some of the products in that video right there. Talk about that. Launching your, your product line. And what made you want to do that? Okay, absolutely, man. I was I used to work for a company, um, a hair care uh, company. And uh, at that particular time, it was more so okay. That particular company was designed for women. Their products were catered more towards women. Okay. Um, but I figured out a way to make those products work for what I needed them to work for in the grooming uh, sector. Mm -hmm. And so at the at the time when I started, it wasn't a lot of products that catered to men. And so that was the, one of the issues that I was having. <clears throat> um, I became what a lot of what a lot of uh, stylists become and which is a kitchen chemist. I started just putting some products together in my kitchen, okay. putting different oils together and different things like that. Um, <clears throat> And so what I did was I just had a great idea and I was just like, hey, look, I want to get get uh, create some more products for guys. And a guy that I used to work with, I pitched an idea to him. He saw the vision. Um, we partnered in and we just we made we brought it to life, bro. And so what we have is what we uh, a line that's entitled the uh, TCM, which is short and short t stands for the classic man. Um, our products are really catered uh, the uh, our thing is we with our product line is it's for a, a, a wide array of men so we want our men to feel good about themselves to look good we know that our men play hard and we want them to look good doing it at the same time so we created products for the beard we create we created products for our skin uh, we also created finishing products shampoos conditioners um it's a few other products that we have coming out uh in, in the up and coming seasons man but that's a great line. And so what we have right here, I could just show you a few different pictures of what we kind of have going on. Okay. Um, this is this particular product right here is uh a foam beard wash. This is a waterless uh hold it over just a little bit more beard. to you. Hold it yeah, right there, right there. Well you could no, right? Go back, go back to the yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Okay. I just want to see your face and that cool. Okay. All right, that's the phone. Yeah, this is the okay foam beard wash. That's a waterless wash. Uh, a waterless wash. It foams up. You can lather your beard up um, and take a, a take a dry towel and just wipe it out. Oh you wow! You know, and that'll that'll cleanse it uh, from that space right there. This particular product right here, what you have is a beard balm. Okay. A beard balm is uh, the the uh, the the density of the beard balm. It's a little thicker. It's not like an oil, so it's a little thicker. So it's good for like a full beard. It's good. You can use it as a pomade as well to like actually lay your beard down. Um, all of our products have moringa oil, sunflower seed oil in them, um, jojoba oil. So we have some great essential oils in our products as well. <clears throat> this right here is uh, the beard oil. Okay. All right. So the beard oil is a great product. Um, as well, so it, it, it just kind of depends. For some people, they might, they might prefer a bomb. For some people, they might prefer oil. Um, it's just a personal preference when it comes to those two different products. They essentially do the same thing, but they perform slightly different. Um, this right here is a, a leave-in conditioner. Now, you might say, okay, with well, a leave-in conditioner for the beard, but you got to figure, you have to figure. So we have leave-in conditioners for our hair, but so it's, it's just as important to have a leave-in conditioner for your beard because even for your beard, people have dandruff in their beard. A lot of people don't know that, but you can get uh, dandruff in wow. your beard as well. Yeah. So with the leave-in conditioner, it helps soften the beard. It makes it more manageable for you to be able to comb through it. Um, with the leave-in conditioner, also, you don't necessarily have to rinse it out. Uh, you can actually just leave it in a small, a small amount, leave it in and go on with your day. Yeah, so these are just a few of the products that I wanted to bring over here. We all, like I said, we also have some products for the skin and uh, for our hair as well. So okay. we have a gel A for uh, those who have a twist style for the twist sponge style. Uh, we have a few pomades that we'll be dropping shortly as well. Okay, I got you covered, man. I got the uh, I got a little picture show of all your stuff on your website, right? Yeah, yeah, I see it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, that's good. Oh, give them the website; they can go and get that, man. And Absolutely. It's uh, tcmlifestyle.com. 
You can also follow us on all the other platforms, uh, Instagram, which is uh, TCM Collection, TCM Lifestyle. Um, you can also find us on some of the other, our other platforms. We're on Amazon. We're okay. also on the Walmart platform as well. Um, so definitely, but I would definitely say the easiest route is go to our website, which is tcmlifestyle.com. All right, Become a member. You can, yeah, you can also receive some of the discounts. Okay. I'm going to get all those links. I'm going to put them in the description below. So all they got to do is just scroll down and click, click, click wherever they want to shop. You know? Yeah. People are, are Walmart fans. They want to go to Walmart. It don't matter. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Get it, bro. Just get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love the packaging, man. It's, uh, it's very masculine. I like it. Like, and it's classy, man. Like it fits. It fits Thank the you. whole brand. Like that Thank fits you. the whole brand. Like for real. When I see I that, that, you'll see what you're doing. I see the brand. So yeah, I love it. I love the color schemes, the gray and silver and the blues and the, man, yeah, yeah, that's right. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. it. And that was that was by design. So I appreciate that, bro. Thank oh, you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You did it. Whatever you were trying to convey. You conveyed it because you said you, you want to do the products for the man. So that right there says man, sophisticated man. That's what that's. I also want to add, you know, uh, with our with our company with TCM, we also do a lot of things in the community also. So uh, a large part of, a large part of our proceeds also we give back. So we give back to other organizations. Uh, one of the main things we do is we help uh, and give back in the area of mental health. Okay. Um, yeah, we find a couple programs for mental health. Um, we also do a thing here in the city, uh, which is a ranch job back to school cuts for kids. Um, so for individuals who are having a hard time getting their, 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 their student haircut, going back to school, we help that out, help out with that in that area. Okay. Um, we also do something that's entitled called a hair high school haircut tour. And with the high school haircut tour for a course of uh, three months, we choose three different schools and we'll visit those schools and we'll cut the students hair at the schools, uh, whether they have a, a great GPA, um, the, if the administration feel like that student uh, needs a haircut and they, they, they probably figure that the kid can't probably afford one. We, we take care of them and we service the kid. Whatever, whatever the area uh, is of need, we service that child. Um, we also do something that's entitled cutting out homelessness. Um, it's kind of a play on words. So, um, and with the cutting out homelessness, of course, um, you know, we're, we're cutting homeless uh, individuals' hair, uh, we give them packages, toothbrushes, uh, socks. Man. Um, uh, you know, women, we give them some products as well. We have products for the women also. Um, so, hey, look, we got our hand in the community, brother. And that's yeah. what it's, we know that that's what it's really all about. Now nah, that's special. You are doing guys' work right there, and, so, and and for the homeless people, sometimes that's all they need, you know, just to just to feel like somebody, just clean up, freshen up, get a fresh cut, man. Look at themselves, you know. You just never know. Change their lives. Yeah. Change their lives. All they need is somebody yeah. to show them some 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 love and some some care. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That's all. That's all they need. Sometimes, man. That's all they need. Really. Yep. Yeah. What about the um, yeah? You got the the Show Me Grooming Expo. Talk about that, man. Your co-founder on that. Yeah, absolutely. So the Show Me Grooming Expo, we haven't done it uh, uh, since the COVID days, but we plan on bringing it back. The Show Me Grooming Expo is a is a big expo that we hold here in the city of St. Louis, where we have uh, some of your top-notch barbers in the industry come in and do some education. Okay. Uh, we have a full day that we set aside. Uh, where we have educators from all over the country come in, um, educate some of the groomers throughout the Midwest region, so they're able to come in, receive that education. We also have a portion of that day where we set aside for competitions, uh, where the barbers are able to compete for some uh, some for some big prizes. Mm, okay, how do how can yeah. somebody, um how can somebody sign up for your academy, the CEO Grooming Academy? How can they sign up for that? Oh, uh, that's easy. You can actually just go to uh, ranchjohnstyles.com or you can contact me on any platform. That's Ranch John at Ranch John. On all, that, that's my handle on all my platforms. That's on Twitter. That's on Instagram, on Facebook. You can, it's easy to find me. Okay. And do they yeah. enter like the shop? How, how does that run? Did it come into the shop? You show them 
<laughs> well, no, what it is is I find out I find out what that individual need is for that person. Okay. Um, and so depending upon what their what whatever their need is, I tailor a class around that their specific need. Mm. So that's how that my classes are designed. Okay. All right. Well, hey y'all, if y'all if y'all in need, if y'all in need, here's a professional man right here. He's top notch. Click the links. Go get school. Go get the knowledge. If you want to get your own business going, he's laying down the blueprint. The blueprint for you. He, he's being transparent, being open. He told you how he started. If you can't take that, twist that, and mold that into something that works for you, I can't help you no more than that. <laughs> Cause the man started from nothing, with, you know, and had a plan and a dream and and just willpower and. Look at him now, yeah. you know? So, yes. Li listen, man. Rance, I appreciate you coming on tonight, brother. Really appreciate oh, you. Thank you, bro. Um, thank you for sticking with me. You know, we, the, you know, you could have copped out like, man, this thing ain't working. I'm just going to bow no, out. No, 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 but no. you kept trying, no, no, no. trying to get it right over there. You got it right. Here we are, man. So, it's been a pleasure. I really appreciate that. For real. No, thank, thank you for having me, bro. Uh, no doubt. No doubt, man. It's an honor. You're doing great things. Keep doing great things for the community and just building people up. I love what you're doing, man. You're not just cutting hair. You're over there changing lives, training people up, you know, to be better men, women, whoever you got going, you know, under you. So, yeah, it's beautiful, man. God bless you, bro. Thank you, brother. God bless you too, bro. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, y'all, you know where I'm at every Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're right here kicking it with somebody like Rants, giving you the gems, giving you the value the value that you've been looking for. I know people out there who are trying to do things, but they just don't know what they need to know. They don't know where to start or somebody's trying to charge them an arm and a leg just to get a little information. Well, here you can come here and get some information to put in your tool belt and go out and be great, man. Thank you once again, Rance. Y'all check him out too. Make sure you go follow him on Instagram. It's Rance John. And then you got the TCM lifestyle on there as well. All the links are down below in the description. You have no excuse. Go buy the products. Black owned, independent entrepreneur. We love it, man. Until next For time, sure. we out of here. Let me shut up. <laughs> 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 nah, but thank you so much once again, man. We out of here. Thank you guys for tuning in. Peace and love, y'all. Till next time. We kicking it. <laughs>